on a day like this. Which is everybody. Brother Bob, go a few brother Adrian to come on. We're going to receive our tithing and offering tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for all your many blessings. Lord, we're so thankful for all that you're doing and all that you've done. We ask you now, Lord, to receive our tithing, receive our offerings, Lord, as we bring them on the storehouse. Bring the Lord in the manner we say I give the Lord, and I thank you for it. And I thank you for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
friends without some of our sick folks, you know. Uh, so, praise the Lord. Glad to have all those visitors. Uh, keep Sister Sabrina in your prayers. Um, who am I missing? Yeah, uh, Adrian, Brother Adrian is uh, is trying to be a leopard. Oh. Uh, he's got some spots on him. Uh, praise the Lord. Hey, uh, I told his mama, she said, well, I think he might be the antibiotics. I said, well, what are you doing? She said, I'm off the cellar. I said, well, yes, the antibiotics ain't none of us can take it. Yeah. <laughs> You give a box of silver to me and I'll be on the floor in five minutes writhing in pain. So she's about the same way. And Sister Martha's about the same way. So, yeah. They have to give me Keflex. I can't do that a box of silver. Boy, that stuff tears me up. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but uh, we need to pray for Brother Adrian that he'll, that he'll change his leopard ways. Get him healed up here, feeling better. Amen. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Sister Felicia. Oh, yeah, Sister Felicia uh, said that her back is out. We need to pray for her and uh, that she'll get a speedy recovery from that. Um, Brother Seymour got a call from Brother Grady last night. We went to me and him, Sister Rose, and Sister Melody went to uh, Sam's to buy our stuff for the cooking over there Saturday. And, uh, this Saturday? Yeah, this Saturday. And then uh, Brother Grady called and was asking for prayer. Brother Grady's down to less than 100 pounds, Brother Seymour said. Uh, well, he wasn't a real big man to start with, but that's still, that's pretty small. So uh, they said they can't get figured out exactly what it is is wrong with it. So they had a test this morning at 9.30. We're hoping that they got some results on that to figure out what they can do to help this brother yes. get on the mend. So they, uh, the doctors told him he could preach. Well, the man is a, he's an evangelist. What else did he do? You know? So uh, they'll need some financial blessings too. So just be praying for the Grady family. Amen. Amen. And anyone else? I still remember the situation in Just go blame their lady. They wasn't 
complained too much when I walked out this morning with feet, but they got crazy. Let's remember Sister Sherry's family. Yes, yes, yeah, amen. Is this your aunt? Is that what? Yeah, it's this one. How old is she? She's out now. She's 29. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so I'm 95. Yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. Wow. Praise the Lord. Yeah, he blessed her phenomenally. Yes, he did. Just you. That's the first year we've ever had anything. Yeah. Yes, amen. Man, 
We're going to make a bunch of kettle corn first. He said, before you start cooking all that soup, couldn't you cut us some kettle corn? Said, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, we, uh, after I get that done, I'm going to start cooking chili in that pot. And we're going to cook a big pot of chili. It'll be about probably eight gallons of it anyway. And uh, we're going to have it, and it's going to be homemade by me. I'm gonna fix it up and do my do my best to make it taste good. So we'll have the Brunswick stew and we'll have the chili. We're gonna have uh, hush puppies for our bread. We're gonna fry up some hush puppies so we have plenty of bread. And then we're gonna have desserts. So and drinks and just have a good time of fellowship. And we're trying to get people from the Linden and Perry County community to come and we're, we're giving all this away. This is all free. Uh, it is to somebody. <laughs> but uh, it's all free. But uh, we're going we're gonna to try to get folks to come. We're, we're trying to help the Linden Church to get some people to come and get to know them and get to, you know, to realize that the church is still there, you know. Amen. Uh, you know, it is on the back road. It's up there, you know, in a spot where folks drive by there every day and probably don't think about folks out of church. That's right. And uh, so we just need to wake them up and say, hey, we're still here, you know. But this church is still here. It's still alive. And we'd be glad if y'all would come be a part, you know. So we're just, we're going to help our brothers and sisters over at Linden and See if we can't help them have a good outreach and a good fellowship. And then the next day, next Sunday, we'll have our 10 o'clock service here. And it's the fifth Sunday, so then we won't have our night service next Sunday, but we'll be having the 2 o'clock service with the Linden Church. Amen. We're going to load up and go over there with them and uh, be a support with them. So looking forward to that. And uh, just a whole lot of happenings going on. The following Friday night, the following Friday night yeah, we will have October fourth. We'll have our seventy fifth anniversary service right here. Yeah. Brother Mark Wilson will be preaching for us, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Brother Bobby Beecham about speaking some too, and uh, and we're just gonna have a good time, and we'll have food that night. Uh, fellowship that night after afterwards. I don't know about plum. Do we just need to do plum out food or just like some good uh, sandwiches? We're doing the fish fry. I know we're doing the fish fry on Saturday. Yeah. We tell them this is the appetizer. If you want the real stuff, you got to go back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I was saying, just sandwich, just uh, what kind of food? Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, that'll be, that'll be next Friday. And then Saturday at, what are we doing that thing? Three o'clock? Three. Three o'clock, we're going to have fish frying down here. And we're going to have fish and hush puppies and french fries and all that stuff again. Uh, uh huh? Okay, did you yeah. just do a bring a pot of white beans? That'll go with it too. That's you right. got that kind of sister part to make sure there's a slice of onion somewhere out of the kitchen. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Friday night. Sunday after church and finish it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of going and praying for some food, we just need what's left. Yeah. Amen. All right. 
Well, all right, now then. That's the fuck the news on the front. So, praise the Lord. Uh, the other night I asked Brother Steve to be ready for tonight. So, he looks like he's ready, don't he? He looks good. So, well, I don't know what that Hey. Come on, brother. Come on, brother McMahon. Come on, brother McMahon. We'll go ahead and get your Bible. You ain't got your Bible yet. No, it's, up, it's down here, though. Praise the Lord. And uh, everybody, let's just get with Brother Steve and not Brother McMahon and just let him deliver the word to us as the Lord give it to us. Amen. 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 Lord bless my brother. Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. You know what? Uh, I was sitting there. I called Sherry because I was undecided it, which way the which title to use. And I was like, "Can you help me?" She said, "No, I can't." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well," I said. So tonight I had it. I thought I had it. Well, the Lord changed it. To, on me while I was sitting there meditating tonight. Struggling with your identity is the title that I was going to say it. But tonight, the Lord changed that and said you're struggling with your calling. He said it's not your identity. You know exactly who you are, but you're struggling with a calling. And I, and I said, hmm. I said, that's exactly where I'm at. Man. Because so many times we wonder exactly what God is trying to do through us or for us, with us, but we're out in the field of unknown. We try to listen to our pastor, we try to get close, and you know, the Lord talks to him and tells him about the plan that he has for us, or the instructions that he has for us. I don't know if this is going to be preaching, teaching, or treating. I don't know but we're just going to dive in and let the Lord have his way tonight. Amen. Amen. Genesis 37, 3 through 5. When you have it, say amen. 3 through 5. Say again. 37. 37. Okay. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all the children because he was the son of old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brother saw that their father loved him more all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him even yet the more. Pastor, would you pray? Lord, we ask you to speak to our hearts and minds tonight, Lord, yes, and anoint the lips of the, of the speaker, and anoint our ears to receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, Joseph knew exactly who he was. God done showed him he was a dreamer, that he was an interpreter of the dream, dreams. Uh -huh. But he struggled because he did not know the path that God had for him. He struggled with who he was. It wasn't that even his brothers hated him. So he was like, I can, I can only imagine what he was feeling because even his brethren hated him. He wasn't liked by his own kind. But God had a plan. We couldn't see the plan, but God had a plan for Joseph. And the later on you look at it in the story that he saved his people. And you look what Joseph went through. He went through the, the dungeon or the prison. Then he had to go through, well, first before he went to the prison, he went through the, the palace. 
and got lied on by the, the, the prince or the princess. And then, then he got thrown in prison. And then he stayed there. We don't know how long he stayed. But the whole entire time that Joseph was going through this storm, God was molding him. Yes. God was shaping him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Sometimes, even myself, I struggled because I knew God had a plan. I knew God, but I couldn't see the plan because everything that was around me was getting torn apart. I love Brother Beecham. God knows I love that man. But when, whenever I was asked to leave, I felt like you just ripped my whole insides out of me. This is the only place that I know. This is the only place that I, I can call home. I, I was like, I feel like a fish out of water because I didn't know where to go. I, didn't, I was struggling because this is where I'm at. This is where I belong. I want to go home. No. No matter how many times I tried, God said no. Yeah. It ain't that I wanted to, to leave this place. No. Sometimes, you know, I struggle. It's a struggle. Because of my mind, that's because he told me, I had, I thought that I wanted to become a basketball player. I've said it more than once. Mm -hmm. But Brother Beecham told me, he says, no son, I'd rather see you behind my pulpit preaching the word of God. He knew that I was going to become a preacher. He, pro he told me that the Lord done showed him I was going to become a preacher. I struggled with that. I said, I can't read that well. I can't speak that well. I said, I get my words tangled up like a like a tying up shoes sometimes. But I said, God, what's the purpose? What 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 have you got? I ain't seeing it. I'm going, I said, my wife didn't want me. I said, she done throw me to the side, and now I have to leave the church in the middle of all this. I'm having to leave the church. Only place that I knew that I grew up. But you know. Who would ever thought? Several years, 10, 10 years, I think, down the road, that God was going to place me at Iron Hill Pentecostal Church under Sister Melanie and Brother Graves. And, and I'm trying to be a blessing to this church. I want to be, I've always said it, I want to be a blessing instead of a hindrance. There's enough hindrances in the house of God without any more hindrances. I don't want to be a hindrance. Amen. Amen. And <clears throat> so then we look at we look at him. Now let's take a look, another look at another man. But before I go there, this is one of my favorite scriptures that I learned. Jeremiah 29 11. It says, For I know the thoughts. I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God knows your ending from the beginning. Yeah. He's got a road map that he's already laid out. He's already got it planned. Sometimes it takes us to go through things for our feet to get lined up with his feet and follow him. Yeah. Sometimes we want to go our own way. Sometimes we like, I ain't seen it. I just want to go this way. We see that didn't work out for Jonah. That was the next man I want to talk about. You know, Jonah, instead of him walking, he ran. He sure didn't want to be called. He was running from the calling. But you see what happened. But, you know, Jonah... We look at that, I don't know exactly what it was. The people, maybe it was the where the fish threw Jonah up, and then they seen a man come out of a fish that was running through the city preaching. That would kind of that would kind of uh, want me to take a heed and listen to. Uh -huh. 
Because they just seen a man come out of a fish. They worship fish. And yeah, they worship fish. So you know, you know, this could be the point that God's saying, you know, y'all want to worship a fish. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna create a fish to swallow up this man, and this man is gonna come out and preach to y'all. But see, we didn't we didn't see what was going on with Jonah either. Because Jonah, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to run. Sometimes that's what that's what I've been doing, Pastor. That's exactly what I've been doing. I've been running. Even though I know what I know what people's put in my ear, and I know what God showed me, I know the dreams that I've seen, I know the visions that I've seen, I've seen setting the services, and I've seen my mama's foot completely healed. I've seen I've seen what God is wanting to do. And I don't know how soon that's going to happen, but I'm telling you, God don't show folks things without something taking place. Amen. Sometimes there's a storm that takes place before the blessing ever comes. Right. Because He's going to try you in the storm to see if you're going to stand in the storm. Even though we can't see in the direction that God is trying to lead us, trying to guide us, trying to take us to, mm -hmm. the whole entire time God's saying, look, I've got a plan. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're going to have to listen. You're going to have to get the hard head inside of you and listen. Yeah. I know Jennifer, quit looking at me like that. <laughs> Praise the Lord, God still loves us hard. Yeah. I'm telling you. But it's, it's for the, but whenever a hard, there's one thing about it, when a hard-headed person gets it, they got it. They got it. You can't not, you can't get by with it, they got it. Maybe that's where I'm at. And through all this, God said, if you finally got it, have you got what I'm trying to tell you? Have you are you going to quit struggling with the calling and just walk in the calling? That's what I'm asking you to do, is you just walk in it. And it's not only for me. It's for, the Bible says that many are called, only few are chosen. Only very few are chosen. I want to be one of the chosen ones and not just one that's called. Because I may have the call. But if I don't have the call to go along with the call, then what good am I? Because there's people out there that needs to hear what God's, what I went through, what, what I, and how to help folks. There's, there's people out there that's committing suicide over broken homes, over, over things that's happened, they, they, and just any little things that happened. They're, they're ready to walk away. <laughs> hurt people. Hurt people. Sometimes that's the reason why God said, iron sharpened as iron. You've got to have your church family. You cannot do it without your church family. And sometimes the church family is the one that might hurt you the most, but it's the ones that's going to help you the most at the same time. You don't see it, you probably don't feel it, but I'm telling you, it did it happen. And... <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now the word of the Lord came into Jonah, the son of the, somebody help me with that saying, Arise and go to Nineveh. That great city cries against it before their wickedness has come upon me. He said, John, John, go. He said, there's a cry that's coming out. And I can hear the cry, just like the children of Israel. There was a cry that went forth, so it created Moses. And Moses had to come up. You look at Moses, the way he had to come up through the children. In Pharaoh's camp. They wanted to, they slain all the kids. And so she wrapped him up in a basket. You don't think God ain't got a plan, folks? 
Sometimes we just don't see it, but God has got a perfectly laid out plan. But Jonah rose up and fled unto Tarsus for the presence of the Lord and went down to Jaffa. And he found a ship going to Tarsus, so he paid the fare. Sometimes you're going to pay the wrong person for the wrong information. Just so that you can try to get what you want out of the deal. But God's saying, you know, it ain't going to cost you nothing. It ain't going to cost you a dime for you to just listen. Just, 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 to, just to listen. Just, just, it ain't going to cost you nothing. But if you don't listen, it's going to cost you everything. Because God has got a plan that you need to walk in and you need to pay attention to. I've got it laid out. But it's not going to cost you nothing. But all you got to do is just listen to what I'm trying to tell you. And, and listen to the people that I put in your life that is giving you direction and the way that you should go. Sometimes it's not easy. It's easier said than done. It's a whole lot easier just, you know, just... Man, I don't want to go that way. <laughs> uh, Lord, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I, that's uncomfortable. That's out of my comfort zone. That's just not what I want to do. Uh -huh. Ain't there something else I can do just a little bit better? Then we try to, what we try to do, we try to petition with God. We'll see how that works out. That ain't going to get you nowhere either. <laughs> he says, no. He says, I gave you a, I gave you an opportunity. And I want you to walk in that opportunity. We look at another man. And Matthew chapter 16. 13 through 19. When Jesus came unto the coast of Syria, the Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? The Son of Man? I am. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Elijah. Elisha. The others say, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He said unto them. But who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. And Simon Peter. Answered and said. Thou art Christ. The son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered. And said unto him. Blessed art thou. Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this. But my father who art. In, which is but my father. Which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whosoever shall bind on earth shall be bound on in heaven, and whatsoever thou loosen, loosen in heaven, earth shall be loosed in heaven. Sorry. <laughs> but here it is. Now, Peter just got his calling. Peter just, he was told what he was, what his calling was going to be. But we look at it over in John. John chapter 21. See, I was asking uh, Sherry about this, but I just got to read Twenty-one, three through seven. Simon Peter said unto them, "I go fishing." See, Peter was a fisherman. That was what his identity was. He was a fisherman. He was. He was like, whenever Christ done died, God done called him, 
He's like, I'm going fishing. I'm, I'm going, I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back. I'm going. He doesn't forget what God done told him. God said, You got the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever shall be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He done got his promise. He done got his calling. But we see after the crucifixion of God, where's Peter? He's back on the boat. He's back on the what? He and so we read on. I'm trying to not get too big. <laughs> They said unto him, We go with thee. And they went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And there, that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew him not. They didn't know that was Jesus standing there. Can you imagine having the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords stand there and you not even recognize him? Uh -huh. Have we come so blinded to things sometimes in our walk, our daily walk, <coughs> that we lose our vision, we lose our calling, but the whole entire time we lose who Jesus is? Uh -huh. And he's standing right there. But we don't even recognize it whenever he's standing right there. Right. Because we get so caught up in what's going on around us that we can't see who's standing there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Lord, man, that's powerful. I ain't saying it. That's what God gave me. That's the reason why it's powerful, because it's what he gave me. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered and said, No. And they said unto him, Cast your nets on the right side of the boat. <clears throat> and the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they knew not, was not able to draw for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciples knew, they knew then, they knew then that Jesus was in the midst. Whenever Jesus is in the midst, things are not going to be the same. We may toil all night. We may wonder all night. But just a few minutes of just in a few minutes of God's presence, Sister Martha, everything changes. Everything's yeah. made new. Everything's made different. Yeah. What was what was once was nothing. Was empty. God filled it with compassion. And then they had to call in another boat because it was a multitude. Whenever God steps in, we just give it to God. If we just really just, just step in to the, what God is calling us to do, we just step in. Yeah. We're going to find out that there's the multitude's going to be so big that we're not even going to be able to hold them within the net because it's going to break. Yeah. We're going to have to call in help. We're going to have to call in different ones because the net's so big and the net's so, so heavy that we can't totally know where we can't we can't do nothing. They can't even gather it together because there's so many there. <clears throat> Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fish coat, fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked. See? Peter's got a calling on his life, but he was running from the calling that God placed on his life, and here it was, and he was naked with the disciples on the boat, or on the ship. This is the man that's got the keys of the kingdom. This is the man that's going to unlock things and find things on earth just like it was in heaven. But we see here that he was struggling. He was 
struggling with his calling that because he did not understand. At that point in time, he did not understand his calling. That's the reason why we've got to have a shepherd in our life. Because he's the one that's leading and guiding and directing. And the Lord shows him things because he's the shepherd. Sometimes we just don't see what the man of God sees. Sometimes we just, he's like, look, I got this. But it's for you to just listen and line up what I'm trying to tell you. That's not easy to do. We're human. There's not in us that we want to line up with somebody. We want to buck up against somebody. We don't want to line up with them. We want to go in different directions. But you know, whenever two bulls, they bumping heads, they ain't a whole lot that's going to get accomplished. You're just going to have two things there that's just, they're going to have hard heads and sore heads and they go, it's going to be a it's going to be a lot of hurt, heartache and, heart, and headache because you just didn't listen. Because you just wouldn't want to grab a hold of what the man of God was saying. Wow. But you know whenever two people are walking together arm in arm, those two people are walking together, they're going to get a whole lot more accomplished than they was if they were just going to sit there and bump heads with one another. Man, uh -huh. Just listen to what the man of God is saying. He's got, he's got this. For Psalms was talking about it. For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh -huh. Just like that, he led our shepherd. And our shepherd is what leads us. He guides us. He's got a vision and it's us for us to grab a hold of that vision and walk with him and not buck up against him. Because God showed that man something. And for the life of me, it hurts. Because of twice, I tried to walk. I tried to run. I tried to leave. I didn't want, I didn't want this. But God said, Son, I put you with a man of God. I put you with somebody that you've asked for. But I didn't realize it until I was gone. And I said, God, that's what I want. He said, You had it. He says, If you want something, why walk away from something that you're asking for? He says, I will give you the desires of your heart. But sometimes it's not for us, to, even though we say we want it, but do we really want it? Do we really want what God's got planned? Or we really want to go through that storm? Or we really want to go through that, that, uh, that, that trial, that, that tribulation? Or we really want to go through that because God got something to store. I've got a plan that I've got for you, but I'm going, But you're going to have it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to go through that plan? What are you going to do? How are you going to accept it? Because just like Peter, Peter did not know his true calling until we see it over here in John 15 and 17. So they had dined with Jesus, said unto Simon Peter, Peter, son of Jonah, lovest thou more than these? So he was asking them, do you love me more than my regular, my other disciples? Do you love me? Do you love me? And he said, Lord, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said, feed my lambs. He said unto him again, the second time, son, Simon, the son of Barjona, lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said, feed my sheep. Then he said the third time, he said unto the third time, Simon, the son of Barjona, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved in his heart. That's whenever he got a hold of what Jesus was trying to say. And then he said, Lovest thou me? And he was in the look, <clears throat> and thou knowest all things, and thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. 
Sometimes it's, we want to wander around like cattle in the field. Not really wanting to know where to go. But when a sheep hears the shepherd's voice, they come to the shepherd. Whenever you're hauling that bucket of feed out there to the cattle, they know that they know their master. And he's coming with food. I'm telling you, you better get out of the way if you're going to get run over if you can get in the way of a cow whenever it's coming into the feeding time. That's the way we should be whenever we're coming into the house of God. Whenever the shepherd's got the, he's got the food prepared, the Lord's done prepared the table for us to come and feed on them. Everything that we need, Jesus has a table spread. All we have to do is just listen to what God is trying to say to the church. And just line up with what God is trying to say. And I say, God, I thank you for giving me this. God, I'm going to try to do better. Because God, you do have a plan for me. Even though I feel like such a failure in life, feel like everything is just fell, and it's hard for me to grab a hold of something because I feel like I fell at that too. But God said, if you don't grab a hold of it, you don't know if you're ever going to fail at it or not. You don't know what you're ready for or what you're capable of doing until you get a, grab a hold of the horns. Then whenever you grab a hold of the horns of them things, then you're going to find out what you're made of. Because then, only then, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be a tussle. There's things that's not going to come easy. But with God, all things are possible. Right. All things are made new. There isn't anything that's impossible with God. If we just give it to Him and let Him just say, you know what? I ain't capable of doing this. Me, myself, and I, we're not capable of doing this. Uh -huh. But with God's help, all things are possible, and He's got something in store for me. Only thing I've got to do is just listen. Only thing I've got to do is just line up and follow the direction that He has for me. Sometimes lining up is not the easiest thing to do. But we're, we're just human. We just, just like it is right here. Peter was just human. He had a calling. God already had. I mean, who, who would ever thought that you look at it? Peter, upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was using Peter for that. Acts two thirty eight. That was the keys of the kingdom. That was the, that's where the that's where it all began. And it started with Peter. But Peter was just a poor fisherman. And he was even naked with the other disciples on the boat. Me and my pastor, we go fishing quite a bit. But I guarantee you, he'd throw me overboard if I <laughs> Because 
I love it. But the just think, crystal water is so clear. It looks like you can just. It looks like it's just this deep. All you see is the fish swimming in there. But it is so clear, so fine, so crystal clear. But whenever you step off in there, that's water that's going to be over your head that you're going to have to swim in. Because you cannot walk in these waters only to swim in these waters. That's exactly where Jesus is at. Everything is out of your control and it's in His control. And it's waters that you're going to have to swim in and not waters you can walk in. That's right. Praise the Lord. Yes. I, I believe that's about the best I've heard you speak, brother. Right. Thank you. It's very good. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you get a wonderful point. And you know, the thing of it is, when Jesus was asking Peter, he said, do you love me? In other words, do you trust me? Uh -huh. That's right. Are you willing to do what I tell you to do? Mm -hmm. Peter said, you know I love you. I love you. Yep. And he said, feed my sheep. Yep. You got to remember something. The lowliest job in all of those Bible days was to be a shepherd. That's it. That was the lowest job there was. Jesus said, are you ready to go down to the lowest position yep. and do what I tell you to do? Mm -hmm. right. That's when Peter, when he asked him that third time, he humbled himself. Yes, sir. Because he said, I see what you're saying. Yep. I can't still be what I used to be and do what you want me to do. Yeah, that's it. I've got to step forward, and I've got to step forward in a newness. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. He doesn't call us to be what we were. No. He calls each of us to be what he has designed us to be. That's it. Yep. He, he didn't just, he didn't want to just save us and and let's worship and praise him and die. That ain't, what he, that ain't why he saved us. He's got a purpose for every life. Amen. Yep. He's got a vision, a plan, a direction yep. for each and every one of us. We can fight him or we can submit to him. Uh -huh. Become that lowly servant. Become that one that's, okay, when I'm on the bottom of the food chain here, if I'm going to excel, if I'm going to come up, it's because you're going to promote us. That's it. We try to promote ourselves, we, we get in trouble. Yeah. But if we let God, God promote us to the next level, yep. to the next tier, to the next paradigm. Yep. Right. Yep. Now, he'll bring us up in the manner that we should be. You know, he doesn't give us anything that he tells us to do. He does not give us unless he's doing it himself. That's right. That's right. Yep. Train up a child in the way that they should go. He's training us up. Absolutely. Training this up. If it took him 40 years to get 400 years of Egypt out of his people, that's it. 
We can't expect him to have us finish the next day after he talked. Because if you look back and sure when there's a boy that was gone home for God for a little while. Well, that's right. Until stuff started to go wrong, and then there's all that start whining and waiting about, well, in Egypt, we could do this. In yeah. Egypt, we have uh, that. Well, and the Lord said, well, here we go again. I thought I was going to get the stuff up. Well, no, we got to stop right here. Yeah. Learn this. Take that trip around the mountain again. Yep. We're no different than the Israelites. We look down at them. We look, you know, it's easy to have hindsight. You can look at them and say, y'all must know that. What was y'all thinking? <laughs> but if you look back in your life, you'll say, you don't know. What was you thinking? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Guilty yeah. as charged. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Steve. Good thought. Good work. That's what the Lord gave me. So I just I, I believe it. I believe it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. <coughs> so, I, I felt Sunday night that you were supposed to bring the word tonight, and you did. You brought it according to the word of the Lord, and I appreciate you for it. For obeying the Lord. Hallelujah. Wasn't that good? Yes. Did it feed you? Yes. Maybe give you some food for thought? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's stand together tonight. And uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We're thankful for the word that we have received. We're thankful, Lord God, for you. Uh, I need in the mind of God to speak, Lord, into this congregation and into our hearing. Lord, we ask you now to take us from this place. Thanks about our duties, Lord. Let us be sure that we walk in you, Lord, that we walk in boldness, that we walk in grace, that we walk, Lord, in, in the holiness and righteousness before you. Lord, let us be a witness unto someone this week. Let us be... Let us be constantly, Lord, about our brother's business and, and in prayer and fasting, Lord, to see souls saved. And we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen.